Proverbs chapter 19, verse 16. We did Proverbs 1 through 15 last night. <clears throat> 16. He that keepeth the commandment, or in the Old Testament, the law, keepeth his own soul. But he that despises his way, God's way, shall die. Now the law had, if you did not obey a commandment, if you had a child and you tried to chastise that child and that child was just glutton, a drunkard, and rebellious, You didn't send that kid off to reform school. You you brought that kid to the to the gate of the elders and they stoned the kid to death. Instead of movies addressing adultery, if the man and the woman were caught in the act of adultery, they were both to be killed. If a man would come up and say, I have a dream, I have a dream, and lead you away from the God of the Bible, you're, you were to kill him. That there were a capital offense, capital punishment for some of the violations of the law. Glad we don't live under the law. He that has pity on the poor, we've been talking on the poor, the poor has no friends, the poor is despised by his family, he's hated by his neighbors, he's just an outcast. And yet Jesus said about the poor, the poor always you'll have with you, me you will not have. No matter what government steps in, said we're going to, you know, you're not going to. lendeth unto the Lord. So Solomon in the inspiration of the Holy Ghost says, if you help a rich, a poor man, you are lending, you are giving to God. That was a cause in the law. The widow, the fatherless, the poor. The Bible says we're to love our neighbor, to love the brethren, we're to love our enemy. We're to help the poor. Paul had a collection from one of the churches for the church in Jerusalem because they were poor, because they're coming out of the Judaism, coming to Christianity, and they were losing their family, losing their jobs, and losing their income. And that's where you come across those great Philippian verses of the Bible, which are taken so widely out of context. I hate when he does that. And that which he has given, will he pay him again? All right, so let's look at that verse for a minute. He that has pity on the poor. Here's a let's, here's a man he has pity on the poor. You got a, a man and a poor person. Lendeth unto the Lord, that's God. That which he has given, the man that has the pity on the poor, will he, God, pay him, the one that gave the money, again? When you rightfully help the poor, God is going to help you, but let's get away from the prosperity gospel for a moment. Because if you're not a Bible-believing, born-again Christian, you're not going to get nothing when you rejected Jesus Christ. And if your pastor makes you do it with the tithing of Malachi, when Paul says God loves a cheerful giver, and even in the law you found given willingly. Listen, after the Ten Commandments, the law, God says, okay, sheepskins, gold, silver, all those are the women of a willing heart. 
and the willing heart that Moses had to turn to the people and say, all right, stop giving. You're giving too much. And yet, pastors go back into the law. Hey, you got to give. You got to tithe. And you just never have enough. Because you took the willingness out. I am not preaching the prosperity gospel. Because I'm going to assume that the Apostle Paul helped people less fortunate than he was. And he spent both his life in jail. And he said, besides fastings, he also was in hunger. He was also in starvation. And he had no food and water. We are under the principle of Proverbs here. We are under the law. We're not under the law in the church age. And then we've got to rightfully make sure that we give to the poor. You say, what do you mean? I live in Daytona Beach, Florida. I know it's today. It's been a while, but there was a guy yesterday on the street corner asking for money. I don't know what happened. That used to be a, a frequent thing in Daytona Beach. Everywhere you went in Daytona Beach there for a while with them, you would find somebody with a sign wanting money in Daytona Beach. Now let me give you circumstances of a real poor man. And let me give you videos you can find on YouTube. Not everybody holds a sign, oh, I will work for money or I will, I need money and I'm a vet and all that. Not, not all, not all, all. There are some. But not all those are, are poor. You can find on YouTube videos, you can have somebody dressed up in street clothes with a cardboard sign walking away to a Cadillac parked around two blocks away. And there was a one where a woman, she goes into a parking lot where she's not supposed to park in a fast food restaurant and she's got a practically brand new car. And then... We talk to homeless people. Oh, you know, I don't claim ta taxes or anything like that. I've got a whole lot of money. And we talk to the police department. I mean, we come a lot of cases, the police department, Daytona Beach, and in the, you know, other things we talk to. And, and I talk to the police officer, different ones. I said, officer, there's so many homeless people here. And her first response is, they're not all homeless. Oh, uh, besides the fact, officer. And I'm a Christian. I want to do right. But I know there are deceivers out there. And I told him, I said, I said, this is what I do. And I've done it. I've had people come up to me, oh, I'm hungry. I'll offer to take you in a convenience store or a fast food, whatever's near me. I will get you a sandwich. I will get you a drink. I will get you a dessert. And a bag of chips. I had one guy. I took him inside a, a, a restaurant. And I, I got him. The number one meal. I supersized it. And that guy took a whole bunch of. When I left that guy. He had a, he had a the number one meal. But he was sitting there reading the gospel tracts I gave him. All of a sudden he became a, a, a hunger for God. And. And the police officers said that, that that's good and proper. So lo and behold, I, I was talking to my pastor one time, pastor of my church, and I was talking about this, and my pastor told me a remarkable story of people who are con. Pastor said he went in there, he got him a sandwich, he got a drink, a dessert, or, or whatever it was, and he would, he gave the guy a meal because he was outside, the, I believe it was a gas station, now I'm just hungry. And pastor did like, like I have done. So uh, he, he gave him the meal and was going to his car and filling the gas tank or something or getting ready to leave. And he saw the guy go back into the store again. And the guy was trying to return the food that the pastor bought him and try to get money back. And the pastor's like, uh, no, wait a minute, uh-huh, uh-huh. I don't authorize that. I bought that stuff for him to eat, not to put the money back. And I was at a church one time where we fed the homeless 
after they got a message and we were given products by a store to give away free and we had to take a black magic marker and cross off the barcode because they would go back to the store with what we given free and they would exchange it for money so you got to be careful with the poor people we were at a street ministry one time my wife was sitting there holding a sign and she saw that some people bought some fruit and vegetables and handed it to a homeless guy. There was a sign, whatever the sign was. And my wife watched to the amazement that after the people drove off, that that homeless man took their fruit and vegetables and threw them away. So when we want to go help the poor, and the Bible says, yeah, I mean, be minds that we could entertain angels unaware there's also the devil's people out there who try to con you and you got to be you know you got to be wise you got to pray about it and there has been many times i've walked away from the situation i said no i don't have money and i'm like should i have and then I go back to the same gas station the week after and another group of people come in with the same story. I go get gas the next week and I got gas every week at this one gas station. Every week somebody different is coming up to me saying, oh, we... But see, we don't, know, we don't recognize these people. Here in Jerusalem, it's the same people. You would recognize them to a point. When that man, he was lame in the feet, but when he was at the temple asking alms for the people, when it came to the fact is the guy's now walking, and like, that's the guy. He was asking for alms. Jesus healed the blind man. Yeah, that's that blind man. We know who he is, okay? We know his family. We know his standards. We had a guy here for a while. He have a son. Why lie? I want money for a beer. Well, you ain't getting no money from me, buddy. Because if you would buy a beer, I can imagine what other things you would do with, with the money. The Old Testament law was, if you help God, God helps you. Now, the elimination of the prosperity gospel for the Christian is, God will reward you in heaven. He may not reward you here on heaven, on this earth. He may, but he's not obligated. Now, if you go around in the name of Jesus helping poor people, even with a, a, a wisdom heart, don't think you're going to get that raise next week. Don't you think that gasoline just for you is going to be 50 cents a gallon? I don't care what the TV and the radio preacher said. They're full of it while they live on your offering. The only storehouses are getting full are theirs. Yeah, that was a big kick. We are to help the poor. I do it. But we've got to make sure we're wise and we're not just helping any of us. And if you're going to help somebody in the church, be well advised to ask your pastor first. Because your pastor would know if that guy is legitimate or no. He, you know, if you give that guy money, yeah, he needs the money, but you know what? He's just going to blow it and do other things with it. And he. And pastor say, well, if you really want to help him out, get him a, one of them plastic food cards or get him a bag of groceries and, and we'll deliver it to his door. See, money's not always the answer. Some people may be poor because they don't know how to handle money. I don't want to turn this whole thing into about poor, but we got to be cautious. And then we cannot be so hard-hearted to tell God, no, 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 no. Because God may want to bless you for blessing him for helping somebody. 
Giving to the poor is something that requires prayer. Chasing thy son. Well, that's a whole different subject. Chasing thy son. Well, the public school system doesn't say do that. Dr. Spook said not to do that. Give every little boy and girl a kiss on the forehead before you go into bed. And those are about the same kids I wonder are running around burning and looting and, and get rid of the police. Who also been partying at uh, 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 Woodstock. You know, I, I, I don't recommend television, but you can't go back to the old drag, uh, Dragnet 68, 69 programs of Dragnet to see they were talking about issues that are going on in America's streets that are happening today. I can with, find you within three episodes of an episode of Dragnet where the guy said, who, who was also a, a firefighter and played on Emergency 51, one day we're going to have marijuana legalized. And I forget, it was Friday or again, and they turned to each other. Yeah, right, that's never going to happen. In 2020, the legalization is of marijuana, and I'm not following it closely, but I just read something about the other day that Florida is going to help people grow the hemp. The people that are in the government, overthrowing the government today, are those of the generation of the hippies. They had patience. Uh, what verse was I reading? Chasing thy son while there is hope. There is no hope if there's no chastening. And let not thy soul spare for his prying. Now I forget if it was my son or my daughter. If like, it's time for fun. Ah, I haven't done nothing yet. Shut up. And that this verse would always come to hand. They would start crying before anything even happened. Like, uh uh. The Bible says, I'm not doing it. He's crying. Make it real tears. That's cruel. The Bible says there's no hope if you don't chase them. The Bible, we already read earlier, the Bible says you don't love your children if you don't chase them. Go ahead, live without the Bible. And you'll see what happens. You are seeing what's happening. The present day media news is because you adhered away from the Bible. You have taken the fam you have taken the Bible out of the church. You have taken the Bible out of the family. You have taken the Bible out of the schools. You've taken the Bible out of the courthouse. And last time I knew you were taking the Bibles out of the prison. That's why I got out of the prison ministry. I mean, I'm still active, but I ain't going back. A man of great wrath. Uncontrollable. Whoa. We'll give him anger management. Shall suffer punishment. He gets punished for his great wrath. Whatever the punishment is. If thou deliver him. Pay his bail. Pay his bond. You pay for his ticket. You pay for the destruction he's done. You become a liability, yet thou must do it again. What's that mean? You got this guy, he's always getting angry, he's always getting rest, rested by the car. I'll just, I'll just pay his bail. You're going to be paying his bail and paying his bail and paying his bail. Oh, well, we're paying for anger management. We're paying for anger management. We're paying for anger management. Evidently, anger management is not working. I'll give you two reasons why. Number one, you're dealing with the head, and the Bible says you deal with the heart. 
Number two is you're probably dealing with the old man. You're not dealing with the new man in Christ. Hear counsel, listen to advice, and re and receive instruction. That is not what Rehoboam did. Oh, he got counsel, the wrong one. That thou mayest be wise in the latter end. The latter end of Rehoboam is he split the nation into two, and it's been split ever since. I'm telling you, and it may go wrong. When my wife and I saw, it, well, we ha we had to get out. We had to get out of our trailer because they were changing the property and things like that. So we we decided we were going to buy a house. And then our car was dying. We had to get a car. And we went to people and we, 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 we showed them how much we made. We showed them how much it was going to cost. And the people said, yeah, you can do it. And yeah, we can do it. And we did it. Until we needed a new furnace and we, we needed a new roof. And then cancer took the life of my wife. And we had to turn the house over to the to the bank, and we had to we had to have them come pick up the car. But we didn't do it without counsel. We looked at the pluses, we looked at the minuses, and when it came to owning a home and renting. There was a lot of minuses that we did not even realize until we had to pay for those minuses. And people were telling us, yeah, you know, you take your rent and you put it towards your house and your ownership and all that. But you didn't tell me that in the apartment, if the roof leaked, they paid for it, not me when my roof leaked. No one told us or we didn't come to the conclusion that broken furnace was going to be paid by us. Not the landlord because I was the landlord. You got to get counsel and you got to get all the counsel. And sometimes that counsel has got to be against what you want. For your well being. There are many devices there are many devices. The next word in the dictionary of device is devil. Take off the S, and the next word you'll find in the dictionary is 1828 dictionary. You'll find the devil. Isn't that interesting? Many devices in a man's heart. All right, let's see what Jesus said about those devices. Murder, adultery, fornication, liars, thefts. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's tons of them. Nuclear bombs, uh, uh, torture, the guillotine, hangman's news. I can get one person to do the job of four people and pay them as one. There's many devices in the heart. I mean, after all, I got the liberty. I don't want the responsibility, but I've got the liberty. Nevertheless, the council, we just read about the council, verse 20. The council of the Lord, the word of God, hopefully a proper Bible believing saved preacher, maybe deacon. I mean, the proper deacons of the Bible, they were holy, they were right, and they lived the word of God. 
uh, Acts chapter 7, I believe it is, 6 and 7. Not the lousy deacons they have in churches today. You're my friend, so I'm going to make you a deacon. That's not the qualifications. The deacon is supposed to help the people in the church. You go, you're the deacon in my church. Yes, I got something I want to do. Can I get your advice? Hopefully the first thing that that deacon will be is, okay, let's pray over it. Number two, let's open our Bible. Now that's counsel of the Lord. And I just upset more people and kick them in the shin. I don't care. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. All right, one of the counsels of the Lord, I'm going to go out and commit adultery. What's the Bible say about it? Either saved or lost, the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment. What are you going to get? Uh, yeah, you got away with it. And your friends and everybody thought it was well. And even your church liked it. What's the Bible say? Well, you see, you know, in this church, we do things. It's not according to the Bible, but, you know, we're not hurting anybody. And what's the Bible say about it? I keep posting every day in my Facebook. I'm posting my my biblical message about there is no voting in the Bible. But we're gonna well, what does the Bible say? I read today and I posted on Facebook the first king of Israel. Israel had no idea who the first king was until God told Samuel, okay, reveal him. And there was no vote. But, you know, vote. vote for, what does the Bible... I don't care what the Bible says. You're, those are bad people. we got to get the good... Oh, so you're stereotyping, and then there's not all that sin coming. Only this group of people are all sinners, and this group of people, they're going to save the world. Now you're post-millennialism. Our president candidate is going to save the world and bring in the millennium. And then Jesus Christ is going to show and pat us on the back. Good job. That's the same doctrine of the Catholic Church. That's the same doctrine that the uh, Congregational Church brought in New England. But we're Baptists. People say, Stiley, what are you? I'm a Bible-believing, born-again Christian. At the end, Baptist. Old time Methodist. That's what I tell them. Some people, I'm Baptist. You mean the Baptist with the church government that matches the government of Rome before the Catholic Church was ever founded? You mean Rome where they voted for people in the office? You mean Rome where they lifted up the hierarchy of the of the of the office? I mean, the pastor? You mean the, the hierarchy of the Senate of Rome? Oh, I mean, you mean the deacons and the trustees of the church? You mean that government even before the Roman Catholic Church of Constantine? You mean you are studying read the Bible because that's where our consuls be. We're to look in the Bible and say, okay, this is what I want to do. God, what do you tell me to do? I can't speak to people. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. What? So God can't do it in you. All right, we'll move on. But nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, the word of God's going to, Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. The desire of a man in when the desire of man is his kindness. Oh, he wants to be kind. I like that. And a poor man, and as as a desire, he wants to be kind. That's good. A poor man. And who have we been reading about that poor man? He, he's hated, he's despised, and um oh, it's my name. Oh, he's my name. Oh. You know, that family over there in church, oh. They're filthy, they stink, oh. 
A poor man is better than a liar. What have I been saying about lying? There's a man in the pulpit I've been listening to, and I'm, I'm hearing his, his lie. He's telling lies so he get people to laugh at him. A lie is a lie. I have no respect for that. God said, it'd be better if you, if you were starving, if you were, had, if you were homeless, if you were a poor man. That's better than a liar. Remember we went over to Revelation chapter 22? The liars shall have their place in the lake of fire that burneth forever. You know, when the Pharisees sought false counsel, false witnesses of Jesus, you know the Bible says many came? Not a few. And then the many couldn't even agree with each other. Their lies couldn't back up the lies of the lies of the liars. And then Jesus said at the... At, at, oh, boy, I can't think what... Uh, every idle word that man shall speak, God shall give it... Uh, that man shall give it account. Imagine all the lies you're going to have to give an account, and you may not even remember them. The fear of the Lord tendeth to life. Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Fear Jesus and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That Philippian jailer was scared that night. His fear of his death because of the prisoners turned to the fear of God and he got saved in his family. And he's in glory today. He that hath it, the fear of the Lord and life, shall, be, shall abide living, that's what abide means, living, satisfied. A Christian is to be content, to be satisfied. Paul says, I'm content. I'm satisfied. He shall not be visited with evil. When you live properly and do right with God, that doesn't produce evil. When you stray away from God and you go to sin and you do what is not the fear of the Lord. Then evil comes. A slothful man, a lazy man, hides his hand in his bosom, puts his hand inside his shirt, his coat, and will not so much as bring it to his mouth again. He's even too lazy to take it out of his shirt. I want somebody to feed me. I want somebody to take care of me. Smite a scorner. I advise you don't today. Right, let's take the verse out of context. Anybody that comes up to us on the street and starts yelling, smite them. I wouldn't advise it. But do you see the power they had under the law, under God, under King? If you were to take these Christians today, when they bad mouth the party that is against their party, the people, they are scorners, and the Bible says you're to smite them. That's what it says. It doesn't say smite the scorner, the man that preaches Jesus, does it? It says smite the scorner. You know what happened to the man that scorned David as he's running away from Absalom? Go read that, that story of Shimei. Find out what happened to Shimei. He scored. He, he didn't get away with it. Elijah scorned Jezebel. And then he ran for his life. That man took care of, 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 of Baal took care of the 400 prophets and one woman, the leader of the nation, said, I'm, that man's going to... He got out of town. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
Paul is at the Senate or at the council. And they smite him across the face. And I'll smite and he reviled the high and he's like, I wish you haven't lost the word of God says, I'm not I, I apologize. I wish he wasn't the high priest, because I'd like to have let him have it, but okay, the word of God says I was I, I apologize because I wasn't supposed to do that. And I see these pictures and I see these stuff on Facebook. Well, you know, mocking their party against their party. And that violates Paul writing to Timothy. We're supposed to pray for them. You sin the sin. And then you have presence of somebody that James says is a sin. Smite the scorner and the simple will be where? That's not happening today. In a public ministry, we will put a man down with scripture and then somebody else will tag team and try to bring you down. And then somebody else will come up and try to bring you down. We have a man that's at the farmer's market and he relaxes in our our right to free speech not because we're christians so that's there's a little bit there but his main stance is we have the right to be there and that's what he ravages in and he'll go around and tell him you know that guy we hate that guy we're sick and tired of that guy we don't want to hear about it. the guy's like you know what the constitution said he has the right to be there the police said he has the right to be there the city lawyer said he has the right to be there his lawyer said he has the right to be there the Supreme Court of the nation said he has the right to be there. You ought to shut up and resist that. Stop resisting that right that we all are supposed to have. Now they're angry with him. This guy goes up to the people that hate the preacher with the freedom of speech of the Constitution. And he smites them and he gets more enemies. And what he's teaching them about the Constitution is, hey, if it's right for you to do it, and it should be right for him to do it, even if you don't like what he has to say. Because he probably doesn't like what you have to say, and he puts up with it. Smite the scorn is simple will beware. Not always. Reprove one that hath understanding. Okay, here's the opposite. Here's a guy who knows better. We go out in the street, and we're in dealing with the world, and the Bible says, Marvel not, the world hates you. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be there. All right. The world told me you hate me. You go up to somebody, they love the Lord, they want to serve the Lord, they want to do right. And I'll kick. I like kicking. You got a guy who's got understanding. As soon as I find my spot. Reprove one that has understanding of the holy. All right, here's a man who reads the Bible, he prays, he witnesses, and he's trying to do right. And you take him off privately, privately. I heard that you and your family celebrate Christmas and you got a Christmas tree. Oh yeah. Can I tell you what the foundation and the principles of Christmas really are? Well yeah. Well here, here's some books. Here's what the Bible says. Here's some video. A couple weeks later, a month later, a year later, that guy comes up to you and he will understand now. Hey, you know what, brother? I want to thank you. You know, we got rid of it. Or we're trying to get rid of it. It's hard. Pray for it. But man, we never realized. Man, that is just wicked. Thank you very much, brother, for telling me. Or you can do, I think, five. I think I can count them on my hands. And I never instigate. It's funny, I never instigate. But I have Christians that come up to me 
almost every single church, matter of fact, I've been in. Come to think about it. Because I got the people's faces right in front of my face. For some reason, some of them come up being instigated by me. And some come up and, <laughs> well, we're going to keep our Christmas tree. What if I tell no, I'm not going to hear nothing. But, well, what's that? I don't want to, no, we're going to keep it. Then you lost your understanding. That's not what, listen, there are plenty of people. I, I have showed them with the Bible that they were wrong. Hey, I've shown many people that their perverted Bible was wrong, and they are now hopefully still in the King James Bible. And when they walk away with you helping them, reproving them with understanding, they get more understanding and knowledge of God because that's evil, that's a sin. I ought not be doing that no more. He that wasted his father. Luke 15, 11 through 17. The prodigal son. Give me my stuff now, father. I don't want to wait till you're dead. Give it to me now. While under his father's house and maybe business, he spends everything of his father. And chase away his mother. When mama needs help, get out of here, mama. Go, go to the nursing home. Is a son that causes shame. I can think of two boys right now. And their names are right there in my Bible. Told their mother, no, you know. And bringeth reproach. You don't honor your mother and father. Paul even said, you're not going to have a long life. There was a man in the ministry, I forget his name, I heard from another preacher. And he told this preacher, he says, listen, he says, I got to do everything I got to do now. And the preacher said, why? He said, you got a great ministry. God's blessing because I'm not going to live long. And the preacher's like, where'd you get that idea? He said, let me tell you, before I was saved, I grew up, man. He says, he says, I put the gray hairs on my mother. I caused my mother great harm. I caused my parents great grief. I, I, I was ashamed to my parents like the scriptures say. And I'm not going to live long. And he did it. From what I was told. Be not deceived. God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth that he shall all three. Just because you didn't reap it this week. Doesn't mean it's not around the corner. Especially your attitude to your parents. Now, if your parents don't want to have anything to do with you. Okay. Still pray for them. Still do the best you can. Cease. Stop, my son, to hear instruction. Don't get it from schools, TV, and heretic science. Get it from a Bible believing preacher in your Bible, King James. That causes. To err from the words of knowledge. Get yourself in the Bible and get yourself out from the television. Because the television will cause you to err. The knowledge of the media is not the knowledge of the Bible. Get rid of it. I look at just a headline. Just to stay on top of what's going on. Sometimes that's just enough. Every once in a while I will open up a headline just, just to read the details. I don't need anything else. I'm going to look to the Bible. Of my, I'm going to listen to a Bible missionary that's overseas from my news. I'm going to study the men and the women of the Bible. I don't care what the news says. I don't care what the TV says. I don't care what talk shows say. I care what Bible says. 
an ungodly witness. Well, we know where he stands. <clears throat> ungodly witness scorning. Oh boy, we've been talking about scorning. Judgment. Because it will not happen to me. They'll never find me out. I'll get away with it. My color of my skin. Dad will take care of me. The government will take care of me. I'll get a public defender. That's scorning. Scorning is not just, you know, the guy who's preaching on the street or the guy trying to witness. And the mouth of the wicked devoureth iniquity. All they're doing is feeding themselves on iniquity. That's the Antichrist and that's the wicked people in general. The, the, the Antichrist ministry for the seven years is just iniquity and sin and blasphemy. That's all it is. There is, there is absolutely no good in the Antichrist's ministry at all. Do you realize what Jacob's trouble is going to be? There is no good of the Antichrist. That's like saying the devil is sweet and nice. Judgments are prepared for scorners. Ooh, we're nailing those scorners. Poor Paul, Paul, Paul scorned the Christian. And what did Jesus say to Paul? Why persecute thou me? And Paul's like, uh, you? Can you imagine the, the terror on Paul's face when he realized that it was against Jesus? They don't bother me on the street because it's not me. I pray even more for them because I want them to get saved and to realize that they're in big trouble for their big mouth isn't that what we've been talking about and not only their big mouth but think about all the thoughts they're thinking as they're sitting there listening to the preacher for two or three or four or five hours and then never mind he goes home and is angry still with the preacher man my advice to you is believe on the lord jesus christ and get saved and confess them sin and stripes, that's beating. That's a public lash. That used to happen in America. That still happens in the Muslim and India countries today. And when it happens to Christians and the people of America, oh, how cruel they came, that man, for doing a crime. Oh, how rude. And then look at your own crime and look at your own people. There are some people I am told in the world, if they steal, they lose a finger. Well, they get to the point they can only steal 10 times. After the 10th finger, it becomes awfully hard to steal. You got men and women in and out of the, the, the correction system of America 20, 30, 40 times. They make it a lifelong career. Strike for the back of fool. Paul says with stripes. You know what they count as fool? Uh, well, you know what they count Paul and the word of God to whip his back? A fool. You know what they counted Jesus for giving him stripes across his back? They count him as a fool in the word of God. According to the scriptures. Now we know they weren't fool. But that's teaching that foolish doctrine. Get over here so we can whip you. 
Well, I tell you, the wicked don't know what they're going to be judged. 